What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're checking out the new version of D5 Render version 2.10. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so usually the best place to find more information about the new versions of D5 Render are actually in the D5 Render forum. I will link to this in the notes down below, and this is gonna talk a lot more about the different features that were contained inside of this new version. And so this is actually an exciting new release because it's got some pretty cool updates that are going to improve the quality of the renderings that are going on within D5 Render. Okay, and so the first exciting new feature that they've added inside of this new version is they've added an alpha version of real-time path tracing, which is going to apply um, real-time path tracing in here that's going to give you better results when it comes to things like your lighting. And I've applied a different material to this floor. I'm going to go back to the typical light material real quick. We're going to go back to a lighter material just for a second. But basically the way this works is um, if you want to apply the real-time path tracing, what you want to do is you want to go up into your settings right here under preferences and there's a checkbox for real-time path tracing which you can toggle on and off if you toggle it off obviously it's not going to be using that that version it's going to use the old gi solution that it was using in version 2.9 but if you toggle it on then it's going to toggle on that real-time path tracing and so let's take a look at this and this is a really good way to look at it um, because what's going on in here is you've got a reflection coming off a piece of glass and that's really where this is going to affect things it's going to be in your reflections and so if we toggle on real-time path tracing and so what i really want you to pay attention to when we toggle this on is i want you to pay attention to what's going on with the lighting and the reflections because basically what this is doing is this is tracing the path of the light in real time um, and the way that it bounces in your scene which is going to give you a significantly better result in your reflections themselves so your reflections are going to be significantly more detailed with the real-time path tracing enabled and so one thing i want to draw your attention attention to is notice how there's also additional options up in the display settings up here. Well, one of the things that you can do is you can adjust this. So there's an, a custom settings in here when that real-time path tracing is enabled um, that's going to allow you to um, basically affect the GI precision, right? The precision, the higher that is, the better the reflections are going to look inside of your viewport. And you can't see a massive change in here, but you can definitely see the change when you make that adjustment. And then also there's the reflection depth, which is going to set the number of times that light is going to bounce, I believe, um, in the system. But the other thing you're going to want to pay attention to as well is this real-time path tracing is active, but there's also a button over here for accumulate. And so what that's going to do is that's going to use sampling. Um, and so it's going to use your real-time path tracing and then use samples in order to basically calculate the remainder of the light bounces like you would get in your final result right here. So notice how when that's off, you're not getting the reflections off of these lights over here. But if you tap the F4 key on your keyboard, it's going to go through and calculate that like this. Now, I will say that that's a little bit of an interesting definition thing because, I mean, you're not really doing real-time path tracing at that point. You're like pressing a button for accumulate in order to get the final right there. But you can definitely still see um, a difference in your results um, inside of your scenes using that real-time path tracing. And they have an in-depth feature um, on their website talking about how the real-time path tracing is going to work and what the improvements are that you should definitely give a look um, if you're getting more into this. It talks a little bit about your GI precision and the number of light bounces and things like that um, that's definitely worth looking at. But overall, super interesting new feature. I'm excited to see what people are going to be able to do with it. All right, so next up, they've also got a day-night cycle in the geo sky. And what that means is that means, say that you've got an image like this one, um, you can actually download this Moonlight Retreat file in order to give it a try and there's actually a reference that works really well but let's say that you just started off with something vanilla like this so I'm just going to toggle my light off like that notice what that does when you get into the night cycle right here is it gets really dark so you want to toggle into your effect and make sure that you've um, brought that exposure up a little bit like this but then within that environment you can also adjust things like the starlight intensity which is going to affect how bright the stars are and the moonlight intensity which is how much you're going to actually brighten up this scene but then if you go into your custom settings under custom night right here you can also 
make this adjustment. So you can adjust the moon size um, as well as starlight intensity and other things like that in your scene. Now, and so let's say we were to adjust the sky so that we've actually got the moon in the scene. Let's see if we can get that a little lower in the sky so that we can actually see it. There it is. So you've got the moon in the scene and you can adjust where the moon is in the sky using the north offset. Then you can also adjust things like the moon disk radius, which is going to set how tall or how big the moon is, as well as the intensity coming off of the moon. So you can actually use this in order to kind of like customize your night scenes um, using those night sky options. And so if you toggle over into the reference image, right here. This is actually set up with all of that working the way that it's supposed to. So if you go into like your geo sky, for example, you can make this adjustment right here, or you can use that custom sky in order to make that change as well. So there's like moon phases in here. There's a moon phase direction that you can adjust. So all these different things that you can use in order to kind of customize a scene like this. So notice how if I bring that starlight intensity up, I'm going to have stars in here, but then there's also an option they added for Milky Way. And so if you add Milky Way, what that's going to do is that's going to include kind of a Milky Way look in the background and you can adjust the intensity of that Milky Way in here as well if you want to do that. Um, there's probably not a whole lot of situations where you need to add a Milky Way, but um, definitely gives you some kind of like interesting possibilities for night renderings. All right, so they've also made adjustments to the precipitation effects. And so they've got this improved puddle and ripple effect. Um, so notice if I bring the puddle up, you're gonna get more water. If I bring it down, it's gonna be less, but you're getting that more like ripply effect of the rain um, that goes along with the precipitation. You can adjust the strength of the precipitation as well. And notice how they've improved the streaks that are in here for those particles as well. So you can simulate this kind of like rainy look a little bit better in your scene. Note that they also now have the option here for water mist. And so what the water mist is gonna do, and maybe we can see it better if we make this a little bit darker in our scene. So we're gonna bring the sun down a little bit, but notice how you start getting this mist effect in here. Um, and let's see if we can get it even darker so that you can see the mist effect a little bit more. So you can kind of see it a little bit more in the scene, but basically you've got this mist effect that's gonna go over your scene for those kind of like rainy scenes. Um, so you can use, you can adjust the density of that mist using the slider right here. So if you are creating those more like misty scenes, you can do that using this tool. Okay, so the next feature is a pro feature that I can't currently access because my pro license is not up to date, but we now have OpenStreetMap import. So you basically go up to the, train, the terrain option, you click the drop down, and you can bring in a location and the building data with your pro subscription. So that's going to allow you to bring in things like roads, that's going to allow you to bring in things like green areas and buildings um, in order to quickly have that like geographical context. Note this is based off of OpenStreetMap. So if you've ever seen the open street map buildings, um, that's basically what this is going to look like. But this does give you the ability to bring those into D5 render. So for their terrain options, if you have an object that's created with terrain, and this is one I've created using the height maps um, that are already in here. But if you go into the paint, function, there's an option for an erosion mask. And what that's going to do is that's going to add erosion um, for accurate control over the erosion effect and area. So notice I can use this in order to add kind of like a white eroded intensity in here to my scene like this. So you can use this in order to set where that erosion is going to go. And note that you can adjust both the strength as well as the color. So notice I can bring this up. I can colorize this however I want in order to adjust that erosion. And so we've also got some interesting AI post-processing options. So if you click on AI post-processing after you render an image, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to select an image. And if you double click on it, there's an option for in painting. And so you've got options to do things like paint a sky in like this. So that's going to allow you to swap out different things. So if I click on in painting right here, right, it's going to swap in a different sky in the background, which is really cool. 
And so I will note, this was a little bit slow. It took longer than I expected. It took like a full minute for it to replace this in here. But looking at what's happened here, this is actually really interesting um, because what it's done is it's taken the sky and it's put it in the background. But notice how the lighting in the image changed to match the sky as well. So, and there's some artifacts in here. Like I've got some edges up across the top here that I don't really like. But the fact that it comes in here and uses the AI in painting and doesn't just swap out the background, but also changes the lighting and the mood of my scene is actually really cool. And so another really cool thing about this feature is say that you render an image like this one, you can intentionally leave off things like grass and flower gardens um, so that you don't have to add all that extra geometry. And then you can just use the end painting function in order to add vegetation, right? And so notice how you can go down here and you can either do a drag to select or it's going to recognize things. But notice how as I mouse over this, it recognizes the ground here. And then I can in paint like a garden or I can also in paint vegetation. And so in this case, say I wanted this to be like a flower garden. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick this right here. We're going to do in painting. Well, what it's going to do is it's going to go through and use AI to in paint a flower garden in that area that we selected. So what it's going to do is it's going to create an image of the flower garden over top of our original image without us actually having to add any of that with the scatter functions. All right. And so if we look at this, notice what it's done is it's in painted that whole area with flowers, just like this. And it integrates really smoothly into this scene, right? Like this actually looks really good. It matched up with the lighting and everything else in this scene without me actually having to scatter a whole bunch of flowers in that area. So this is a super interesting application for AI, and I'm excited to see where it's gonna go and what people are gonna do with it. Note that there's also a tool in here to add motion blur to um, vehicles and people as well. So if you do want to create a scene that looks like something is moving um, inside of your scene, you can use the AI motion blur as well. And so they've also included a number of new scatter template assets um, inside of D5 like this. So most of those are going to be pro only, but they're going to give you more access to these like basic um, in Blender, they're called biomes, but basically these scatter biomes that can scatter different ways across surfaces. So um, having these pre-set up is super cool because you don't have to go through and like figure out the different grasses and things. You can just pick one and drop it into an area. So um, definitely seeing more of those scatter templates is super cool. And so as always, there's a bunch of other like quality of life upgrades in here as well, as well as different assets. So like things like different unit changes and other things like that, which I'm not going to get too far into. Uh, they did add French and Japanese language. Um, so that's going to be a large group of people that are now able to use D5 render as well as some DLSS stuff that's going to enhance your frames on your animations. Um, in addition, you also got some additional hotel and resort assets as well. So overall, the highlight of this is definitely going to be the real-time path tracing. However, some of the other things, the way D5 is approaching AI, I absolutely love um, because it's not like destructive. And so they're really figuring out AI tools that actually make sense in the rendering workflow. I'm super excited to see what they're going to come up with next in that area because I think they're crushing in that area. So love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this new version? Are you using D5? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.